In those far off days before the advent of the internet, in a land where nobody walked around with a smartphone glued to their palm, and this was our definition of streaming music, Just how did we manage? What was it like growing up in the 70s? We didn't have all of the fancy technology that we have today, but we didn't need it. We had each other and we had our imaginations, and that was all we needed to have a lot of fun. In today's nostalgic journey on Stewview TV, we'll take a light-hearted look at growing up in the 70s. Kids of the past were tougher than kids today. You only have to compare the playgrounds of then and now to prove that. We didn't need padded equipment or soft floors. Playgrounds of the past were a battleground of courage, and scraped knees and grazed elbows were badges of honour. We were true daredevils back then, taking on towering metal contraptions that today would be emblazoned with the contact details of a local accident claims company. The witch's hat where legs were bashed and fingers were caught. Climbing frames where there was only one place to land if you fell off and that was a patch of solid concrete. We had terrifyingly high metal slides that would become molten hot in the glare of the summer sun and swings from which many over-enthusiastic souls would be catapulted into the air. A rite of passage at many playgrounds would be surviving the furious speed of the roundabout as two or three of your friends spun this metal Catherine wheel as fast as they could, while you desperately tried to hang on. The playgrounds of the 70s were not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. And yet we didn't just survive those playgrounds, we thrived. We were fearless in the face of danger. Makes you wonder how we ever made it to adulthood really, doesn't it? It wasn't just the playground that toughened up the younger generation back in those days either. Who remembers clambering into the family car on a hot summer day only to find your skin sticking to the blindingly hot vinyl seats? Back in the 70s, home was wherever your bike was parked. The outdoors were the stomping grounds for children of the time. While many of today's children may be cooped up inside, their faces illuminated by the glow of screens, we 70s kids were out and about, riding wheel to wheel on our rally chopper bikes. Our imaginations were boundless, fuelled by the environment around us. We became superheroes defending the earth from alien invaders, or detectives solving mysteries that would stump even the famous five. Each day was a new episode in our adventure series, and we couldn't wait to see what the next one had in store. When the street lights flickered on, it was our cue to head home. Of course, we didn't play exclusively outdoors. The 70s was a great decade for toys and games, many of which required us to use our imaginations to conjure up stories and adventures. Take Action Man, for instance. He wasn't simply an action figure, oh no, he was a war hero, a deep sea diver, a mountaineer. Each outfit change propelled him into a new daring mission requiring nothing but a child's imagination to script the storyline. Then there was Cindy. Cindy wasn't just a doll, she was a reflection of the times. With her trendy outfits and accessories, she was the epitome of 70s fashion. These toys were more than just playthings. They didn't do the thinking for us, they made us think, invent and imagine. In today's world, a multiplayer game usually takes place online with participants sitting in their bedroom wearing headsets, with their friends doing the same thing in their own houses miles away. Back in the 70s, our multiplayer games took place in one room, with us gathered around a fun board game such as Operation, Mousetrap or Bookaroo. As the 70s moved on, we had the pleasure of playing video games in the home for the first time. Of course, in comparison to today's games, they were as basic as could be. But importantly, they were fun and innocent. Today's technology may be way ahead of what it was, but who needs virtual reality when you've got a Viewmaster? Another big activity in the home was, of course, watching television. 
As kids in the 70s, we were truly blessed to be living in the golden age of children's television in Britain. What made it the golden age? Well, just take a look at this list of children's shows that were first broadcast in the 70s. Bagpuss, The Wombles, Paddington, Mr Ben, The Mr Men, Pipkins, Finger Bobs, Rainbow, Rent a Ghost, to name just a few. And that's just the shows that debuted in the 70s. We still had programmes that have been running for a number of years already, such as Blue Peter, Jack and Ori, and Animal Magic. It was a time when children's television was not just a pastime, but also a teacher. The 70s was also the first decade to dedicate Saturday morning television to the younger viewer. Probably the most difficult decision we 70s kids faced occurred every Saturday morning when we had to choose between Multicoloured Swap Shop on BBC One or Tiz Was on ITV. Were you a Swap Shop or a Tiz Was kid? Kids are more likely to navigate a smartphone than a playground these days and their idea of adventure is a new level on a video game. But let's not be too harsh. After all, every generation has its own idea of entertainment and its own forms of triumphs and challenges. So here's to 70s kids everywhere. May we continue to be as tough and imaginative as we were all those years ago. If you were a child of the 70s, I'd love to hear your own memories of growing up in that decade. Let me know in the comments. If you haven't done so already, I've got lots more videos on the channel recounting memories of the past, such as the one on your screen now. As always, thanks for joining me on another nostalgic journey. Your company is much appreciated.